Hey everyone, my name is Ajay and in this video we are going to talk about VNet to VNet bandwidth performance. In my previous video, we have discussed about VNet to VNet within the same region. And here we are also going to provision uh, another VNet which is going to be in different region and we are going to do some bandwidth performance testing. Let's get started. So this is my VNet 1, it is part of the Central India. This is my VNet 2, which is part of the Central India as well. And this is the peering, which is VNet to VNet peering. We already discussed in my previous video. Now I'm going to provision another VNet to VNet peering, and this time it is going to be the global peering. So for that, I have chosen a VNet 3, which is going to be part of the UK West region. My schema remains same. My first VNet is going to be 10.10.0.0 slash 16. My VNet 2 is going to be 10.30 and my VNet 3 is going to be 10.40. Let's do some verification what we have discussed in the slide. So this is my VNet 1, this is Central India. This is my VNet 2, that is also Central India. And my VNet 3, which we can see, it is provisioned for UK West. I have created only two subnet one is going to be the application second one is going to be the gateway subnet so my application subnet is going to be 10.44.0 slash 24 for creating a peering the process is going to be the same whether you are peering between the two vnets resides in the same region or you want to talk between the two vnets resides in different zones or different regions so on my screen you can see it i have taken a snapshot and it tells me my vnet 1 to vnet 2 it is connected vnet 1 to vnet 3 is also connected so my peerings are up so on my first vnet 1 to vnet 2 it is also telling you what is a peer here i can see my source is vnet 1 my destination is vnet 2 and again, my source is VNet1 and my destination is VNet3. IPOF is going to be the tool which we are going to use for the bandwidth testing between the VNets to look at the performance. So let's take a look what are the IP addresses assigned to the host. My first VM in VNet1, it is going to have the IP address of 10.10.4.4. And these are the IP addresses comes from the DSCP. My second machine in VNet2, it is going to have 10.34.4 and my third VNet is going to be 10.40.4.4. So we are part of the same subscription. That is something we need to keep in mind. In this lab, all these things are part of the subscription one. My application host is going to be app Unix 1, and this machine is part of the VNet 1. And my application range is going to be 10.10.4.0. So the first IP which we have, we have seen, 10.10.4.4, it comes from the same range. As we discussed, while doing the IPERF test, you need to provision a one side as a server another one is going to be the client so here i'm going to say my this machine is going to be the server and these are going to be the client when we do our testing we are going to run the ipuff test from app unix 2 and then we are going to run the test from unix 3 machine so my first test we are going to do some data transfer between VNet1 to VNet2. Let's talk about the IPERF installation. It's going to be very, very simple command. As I mentioned, I'm running the Ubuntu Linux on this host. So I need to run a command sudo apt install IPERF3. Just keep in mind, there are two IPOF version available, IPOF 2 and IPOF 3. We are going to do all our testing on the IPOF 3 here. Once this is going to install it, it is going to ask whether you want to continue. You need to press yes. 
once it is installed if you're going to run the command ipuff minus v it is going to tell you this is 2.0 this is my old version i have ipuff 2 and 3 both installed on these machines so i need to run a command ipuff 3 minus v which is going to tell you it is a type of 3.7 which you're running on this machine once this is done and uh, by the way you need to keep in mind you need to do this exercise on all the host so i've already done it for vm1 vm2 and vm3 they should all be running the type of now we need to keep one machine in the server mode which is going to be this machine so I need to run a command ip of 3 minus s. This means it's a server mode. Now this machine is ready to listen the traffic and the port is going to be 2501. On the client side, this time we are testing VNet 2 to VNet 1 connectivity. So I'm app, I'm on app Unix 02, which is part of the VNet 2. I need to run a command ip of 3 minus c and i need to mention what is my server in this case we created a type of server mode on host 1010 4.4 which is part of the vnet one minus f and k k means it is going to tell you in kilobytes per second however you can change it to megabyte now you need to run a command ip of 3 minus c and put the host name 4.4 it is going to start data transfer and going to give you the results what is your sender versus receiver bit rates since we mentioned in kilobytes it is returning you the data which is in kilobytes when you change to megabyte it is going to return you the data in megabyte Let's perform the same testing from app Unix 3. This is part of the VNet 3. I'm going to run a command ip of 3 minus c and host name is going to be the same. And this time we want data in megabytes. Once my test is completed, I can see the results. And this time this bit rate is quite low. This is my server side VNet. And every time you establish a session, the first session it came from 1034.4. And this is the data transfer rate. So it is going to log all the sessions whosoever initiated data transfer to this IPOF. Now, on the Unix machine 2, we saw a data transfer of 112 megabyte per second. And similarly, here we can see a rate of 21.9 megabit megabyte per second. That's, so there's a huge difference. We need to keep in mind my VNet 2 and VNet 4 in the same region. So when we talk about the regional connectivity, it is going to be very good in terms of the bandwidth links provided by Azure. When we talk about the connectivity, this is kind of the global connectivity which we are referring here. So VNet 2, it is in Central India. VNet 3, it is in UK. So you can think of a connectivity which is not going to be the good as it is for the regional. And that's the reason whenever we are provisioning our resources, we need to keep in mind what is our requirement and how close these resources are supposed to be from each other thank you for watching i will see you in the next video